Thanks very much, uh, and thanks very much for being here. Uh, it's, it's a big pleasure that you are showing in the cruise industry, very dynamic, growing cruise industry. We always hear that it is growing like crazy. There is more to come, I guess. I may introduce my uh, high-ranking panel guests. On my right, uh, Mr. Raul Jack. Uh, he's from um, uh, PFG Maritime uh, Consulting. Consultants that's uh, designing ships, advising shipyards. Is that right? More or less. Uh, More or less. Design and uh, business strategy, entrant to market. And you are very much involved also in the Chinese market. Absolutely, right? yeah. Great. Mr. Dominic Paul, uh, Senior Vice President International of Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, Celebrity Cruises and Azamara Club Cruises, and at the same time, Managing Director of RCL Cruises Limited. You, you always hear the same thing. I, I think we never have heard somebody in the cruise industry having such a long title. <laughs> <laughs> but you are representing different brands. So I look so much beat. <laughs> and um, last but uh, Mr. Giuseppe Tringali, uh, Senior Naval Architect and General Manager, Greece um, of Knut E. Hansen, also a design company involved very heavily in, uh, in China. Very Giuseppe, so. if we just may start with you. You did just um, deliver, you were very much involved in delivery of a ferry. Yeah. If we hear ferry, probably people think, wow, ferry, not very sexy. Is it so difficult to build? Um, don't under underestimate ferry building. Ferries are also quite complex, uh, not only in operating, but also in building. And um, we think maybe that, well, the Chinese, they're able to fly into space. They are, they are uh, having high-speed trains built. Okay, well, otherwise I will shout. <laughs> Who will make each other understand? Giuseppe, why is it so difficult uh, to build passenger ships? And why, several questions, but at, at the end the same question. Why do we see so far only more or less European yards building them? And why is it such a change in paradigm that we see now first also these ships being built in China? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the, the trend is sort of uh, been maturing uh, gradually. Uh, as quite rightly you introduced, Thomas, the uh, progression between cruiser rope access into cruise ships. It's so uh, rope access needs just to... A rope access is a kind of uh, ferry which also carries people, and you know they can be up to a level of outfitting which is pretty close to modern cruise vessels, in, uh, at least in northern and central Europe. So the, the progression has always been there, and we've been observing... I mean, we started building the first Scandinavian design in China back in 2000, is the Gotland ferries. They're pretty sophisticated, pretty advanced, and pretty large passenger vessels. It was, of course, a very complex and painful process. The ships were pretty late. Nevertheless, the product was uh, viable for the European market. And then through that step, you know, we've been experiencing as designers, you know, a constant sort of improvement in many aspects, you know. And what makes a passenger ship more complex than many other ships in many respects is uh, the supply chain. So it is what has to go on board the ship. Uh, it's not the steel itself, it's not the looks, it's what it has to be, uh, what we call the outfitting. So what all the, you know, the interiors, the design of public space, and very complex systems such as uh, air conditioning, which on these ships has a... So, so is it the coordination of suppliers? Uh, Correct. Or how it's the supply say? chain, the existence of the supply chain in the first place, and its coordination. So, so we, have, we have, I think that is something which might be surprising the audience sometimes. We have hundreds, is there right, hundreds of suppliers being involved in a, in a cruise ship or in a ferry building. And to coordinate all those hundreds of suppliers, you correct me, uh, anybody, if, 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 I'm, if I'm wrong, to coordinate all these hundreds of suppliers, international suppliers, means a lot of flexibility, which so far only European, more or less, only European yards were capable to handle. Uh, and so far we thought that, uh, well, Asian yards, they are good in building tankers, building container ships, this is standard tonnage. When it comes to, um, to passenger ships, uh, it's a whole different story. Is that, yes. is that what you mean? Correct. Okay. 
So we have really interesting times now if we see uh, Chinese yards building those ships, if they start now building those ships. At the same time, uh, Dominic is here. I'm very happy that uh, we have uh, such a, such a high-ranking guy also from, from Royal Caribbean um, and, and the other brands I, I told you. Uh, Dominic, uh, we are also experiencing, experiencing very interesting times right now, very thrilling times, because you are the first cruise line uh, um, which is going to put a brand new prototype of ship to the Chinese market. I mean, so far, we did experience the opposite. We had uh, new ships being placed uh, to Europe or to the Caribbean, which were the main interests or main markets. And the older ships were placed to emerging markets like China. And you are now changing this completely uh, and bringing a brand new ship, as I told you, with all the latest amenities, not to Europe, not, uh, it was shortly in the US, but that was just a short, uh, short stay. She's now then on the way to, to China. Why that? And can you tell us a little bit about Quantum of the Seas, which is the ship called, by the way, built in Germany, Meyerwerth? So thank you. So we, we've had a really interesting history in China over the last five years. So we, we really started sailing out of China about five years ago with Legend of the Seas, which is one of our smaller vessels. And we grew very quickly, and we bought Voyager-class ships, which is ships bought, made about 12 years ago. They're beautiful ships and were the kind of the, the best hardware, the best ships in China when we, when we brought them in four years ago. Um, and people were very surprised when we did that because they said, well, how can you feel so confident that China will continue to grow? And we, even, even after a year of operating in China, we got a very clear picture of the potential of the Chinese market. And we've, we've had a very successful few years. And we looked at what we were doing in China, and we realized that China is going to grow significantly over the next few years. I was surprised by the 53% actually there. I, I think it's... Um, I think maybe people are underestimating the potential of the China market. I and mean, if you just look at Shanghai by itself, who knows what the population is in Shanghai? Growing Guess. by a million a growing year. By, by, growing every minute. It's 24 million people in a city like Shanghai. Um, Hong Kong, they're building a fast train link from Hong Kong into southern China. Um, in the next 18 months, within a 40-minute <coughs> train ride, there'll be 60 million people within a 40-minute train ride. That's the same population as the United Kingdom. Within a four-hour train ride, there'll be 250 million people. It's the same population as the United States of America. So everything is on a big scale. And what we saw in China was that our product was really working well for the Chinese consumers because it's critical if you're going to expand in a market the product has got to resonate. It's got to be successful with the local customers. And we if, if, you mean, sorry, if you mean successful, that means, I think, uh, that Chinese want the best, the very latest into technology. They're not going to accept anymore. Uh, is that right? So, uh, yeah, well, what, we was, what we've been seeing is that they love the product. They love the entertainment, the food, the ship. They love the fact that the ships are big. Um, and they were really excited by the product. The product's doing well. And we're building our brand very quickly in that market. And we, we basically said, well, what, what can we do to supercharge what we're doing in China? And we decided to do something that isn't normally done exactly as you say, which is to bring a brand new ship into the market. And not just a brand new ship, but really what we would say the most remarkable new ship that's, that's been built. It's a billion dollar ship, and we're taking it into China. Um, and the reason we've made such a dramatic move is because we really feel passionately that the Chinese consumer, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for exciting opportunities, experiences, the opportunity to do different things on a holiday. Um, what better way to do that than to, to bring a brand new ship into the, into the marketplace? And it really cements our number one position in the market. So in 2015, Royal Caribbean will be the number one cruise brand in China, the largest cruise brand in China. And bringing Quantum into China really cements and underlines that very strong market position. And we've done it because we believe in the future potential of the China market. We believe in the future potential of the China market because we can see how much Chinese guests are enjoying our product. If you get the product right and they enjoy it, then we will do well. Well, it's, it's quite an interesting thing that uh, Royal Caribbean have done. Um, it's basically a major game changer. Um, a lot of the 
Asian companies that we have worked with that are looking at getting into cruising have always focused on second-hand tonnage. Um, there's been some very poor attempts at it, and they will admit that they, they got the wrong ships. Uh, when you put something like the, the Henna up against Quantum, uh, you have a bit of an issue. Um, but also, the, the Henna is uh... Henna is the what well, was formerly built for Carnival Cruise Lines as the Jubilee about 30 years so, uh, ago. Quite uh, in today's today's standards, quite an old, Qu quite, quite an old a small <laughs> ship. Just it, it, to tell the audience, yeah, it's, uh, it was a ship that was was sailing for uh, Carnival for many years, and when it was no longer a uh, viable option for the Carnival passengers, we offloaded it down to Carnival Australia, where we sent a lot of old ships. Um, and then, when there was no longer any use for the Australian market, it was sold to China. Um, so we now have Quantum of the Seas in there, and we have Henna. So we've got both extremes. Well, we have uh, also other cruise lines there. I we, mean, uh, we have other cruise lines, but as Dominic said very clearly, the Chinese like the new product. They love the new product. And that means that they want more and more of the new product. They don't want any more of the old product. The Chinese market do not want European seconds. They want, they have the money to pay for the best quality. They want the best quality. And for any cruise line to think that they can get away by sending down old tonnage to China, they're in for a shock. But who is going to build those cruise ships? Maybe we have, we have a second question just prepared for you uh, in order to, to let you participate a little bit. Um, do we see it there? Um, yeah, which statement do you most agree with? And just only one answer, please. China will be able to build high-quality cruise ships in the near future. Please press one. It will take China quite a long time before they are able to build cruise ships on time and in the required quality. Press 2. On time and in the required quality. There are other shipyards they did not build on time. And number 3. China will never to be able to compete with European shipyards in the building of high quality cruise ships. Please press 3. Just standing up because I want to see what is the outcome of that question. <laughs> nice four, by the way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you so sure about that? I mean, do you know how, how, how difficult it is to be build cruise ships? <laughs> Okay. I'm impressed. Clear statement, that clear statement. Do you see it all, gentlemen? <laughs> Quite a clear statement. Do you want to ask the panel what they think? <laughs> who, will, who will build those ships? Um, are they going to be able to build the ships? Yes. Um, Giuseppe, maybe uh, you, can, you have a lot of experience yeah. with, 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 uh, with with working with Chinese shipyards, uh, are they going to make it? Especially, maybe the second question also, if we compare with Japan, they did build already some cruise ships, uh, Korean yards, they did try, but never, they never, actually they never built a cruise ship so far. Why, do you think Chinese That's will make it? Very interesting observation. I don't agree with the public, first of all. Uh, Great. Sorry, but you know, we've been exploring this, you know, on behalf of our customer, like here perhaps we have a, bit of a closer understanding of what it takes. We believe that it will take some time, obviously, and they will get there eventually, and they will build also uh, to the right quality. And of course, the exercise is pretty complex. They will start maybe with uh, enhancing the supply chain, as we defined before, maybe with uh, operations. They will bring, you know, there will be need for uh, refits and, uh, you know, supplies of bits and pieces to operate the ships. If, if I may just interrupt you, sorry, that, that is something which, which uh, uh, in a discussion I had uh, with Roll did tell me that um, because we have new tonnage now yeah. in China, we need more, uh, we have more need for refits. Correct. Uh, refurbishment, uh, refits, uh, so we need also more expertise 
there. So it, exactly. uh, it doesn't help the cruise lines at all if uh, in Hamburg there are a lot of experts being able to refit ships but and and ships not there. Over, so yeah. the more tonnage we have there, the more refits we, uh, are taking place there, the more suppliers are moving there. So th there is a building up of expertise. expertise. Is that that? Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> correct. And as uh, Mr. Paul could confirm, you know, it's, uh, it goes without saying that relocate ships simply to refit them and, you know, to have a midlife extension, that's a massive cost for an operator. So if you're operating on that side of the world, of course, the people will start building the expertise and the knowledge over there and therefore the supply chain. Very interesting what you said about Japan and Korea. Uh, in our uh, field of operation, we don't work only with passenger ships, but this is what we're talking about today. We've seen, for instance, the Japanese pretty much failing in building and delivering, you know, uh, cruise ships uh, in sort of large scale. And everybody's been wondering why. I mean, even we Italians succeeded, you know, with time, you know, to, to deliver cruise ships. It took uh, Italy about 15, 20 years before they could make the, the ends, you know, meet in a cruise, cruise ship building. Because it's a very complex exercise. It doesn't only require the supply chain, it requires a high level of uh, capability to react and adjust. But Japanese are great here. I mean, they are building also. They're very so organized. Are they too good, maybe? <laughs> are they too perfect? Do they want... Do, they want, uh, but, uh, do you have experience with Japanese shipyards? Uh, yeah, I mean, why did they fail? They haven't... Well, it, it's, not a, it's not a failure because they can't do it. It's a financial failure because it's too expensive to do it. Correct. Um, you know, 10, 12 years ago, uh, Princess took delivery of two ships from Japan, the Diamond and Sapphire Princess. And those ships are probably the best quality ships in the Princess fleet. They're absolutely beautiful. The workmanship is second to none. Um, but it cost the shipyard a lot of money to do it. And they pulled out of cruise ship building. They had a 10-year break from it. And they decided to get into it again. And they're, they're currently building two for AIDA. Uh, they've already declared a very large loss. Uh, they've declared a delay on delivery. And Dominic will tell you if he has to delay a delivery of a ship by six months, there's a, there's a huge penalty on the shipyard involved because he's losing revenue. So it's a, it's a big issue. Um, they can build. They, they have the capabilities of building. Um, but but why, the, the biggest, why, what, the biggest risk... The why biggest were they late or why, why did they not they, manage? They, they're delayed because of several reasons, but mainly because they want to do it right. They, they do have a lot of... Um, prestige, uh, honor in, in delivering the right product. But the biggest issue that they suffer from is the foreign exchange rate. Um, it's quite easy to talk about technical capabilities. The Japanese are excellent. We, we won't question that. But when they have to outsource about 30% of the work to European subcontractors, they're taking on a euro-yen <coughs> fluctuation, and we've all seen what's happened with the euro, the dollar, and the yen recently, and a 20% fluctuation in 30% of a 1.4 billion contract is a significant amount of money. Um, along with the delay payment and everything else, then it becomes uneconomical to build cruise ships. Is, is that affecting you, Dominic? I mean, I know that you are, uh, first hand, you're marketing, uh, you're not building the ships yourself, you're a huge company, you have your experts building ships, but are you following also this, 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 this um, evolution, whether it will be an option for Royal Caribbean? Uh, because if you want to grow, the way you want to grow, uh, we don't have enough ships. Uh, Raul, you, you said me that we need about 65 for ships There's, in the, the next years. It depends on which only for China. Yeah, it depends on which figure you pick. Um, several years ago, uh, it was estimated that there'd be 10 million Asians cruising by 2020. Clear estimated 7 million. The Chinese government last year put an estimation of 4.5 million Chinese only, not counting the other Asians. So we pick a figure somewhere in between. Now let's say we work off 7 million. 7 million is around about a need for 60, 65 new cruise ships. Uh, there's currently 33 cruise ships on order, for some for the Asian market, some for the European market, some for the American market. So where are we going to get the other 30 from? Uh, Dominic, this, are you considering, uh, is your company considering building cruise ships uh, in so, China? Well, I'd say we're, we're quite fortunate at the moment in the sense that we've got um, 
Anthem of the Seas, which is just about to come out of the shipyard here in Germany at my Werft. Um, we've got uh, Harmony of the Seas, the next Oasis class ship coming out of STX in France next year. Um, we've got another um, quantum class ship coming out next year as well. And then we've got two celebrity ships being built in 2018 and 2019 here in my Werft as well. So we have got a very strong pipeline of ships already in order. So we're, we're fortunate, if you can use that expression, to, to have got very strong shipbuilding orders in place already. Are there any plans uh, to, to, to put them also, uh, put any of them to the Chinese market? This is, this is a journalist way of trying to get me to <laughs> announce something. That, uh, <laughs> that was, Maybe. So we, we, when we build our ships, we build them far out. So we, we actually don't necessarily know where those ships are going to go. It depends on how the different markets are performing as to where the ships go. So if we order a ship five years out, we don't know for sure where that ship is going to go. To take Raoul's point, we know that there is a lot of um, future demand for cruising. So we know that we will need those ships. We don't necessarily know exactly which market we're going to put them in. But I think the point that I wanted to come back to was whether, whether, the ships, whether there will be ships made in China at some point. And the points made here have been excellent, which is it's complicated to make a cruise ship. It's a complicated business. It requires lots of subcontracting. It requires lots of expertise. And I, I actually have no idea how quickly the um, cruise building market will establish itself in China. But the one thing I would say from what I've learned in China is that if the Chinese, if Chinese business people, the Chinese government, if they want to get into the shipbuilding industry to build cruise ships, they will do it. And they will do it quicker than anybody else realizes is possible. Because once they set their mind on something, they have a very, very good track record of delivering on it. So I would say, and, and we've got a whole history of this. We never, no one ever thought Quantum of the Seas would go into China in 2015. People didn't think Voyager class ships of ours would ever sail that was, outside that was the Caribbean. That was your former class of ship, the Voyager. Uh, Voyager. Yes, you, they didn't yeah. think they would ever sail out of the Caribbean. And they went to Europe and now to China. So we actually. Who knows what's going to be happening in five years' time? But what I would say is that the Chinese, um, the Chinese market will grow quicker than people expect. And I should think that the, if the Chinese authorities, governments, businesses want to build ships, they will do that. I mean, the interesting thing is that um, you certainly did follow the news that uh, Carnival Corporation did sign a memorandum of understanding, uh, <coughs> a corporation a kind of um, memorandum of understanding, understanding yeah. yes, with um, with Fincantieri, the Italian shipbuilder, and uh, with the China State Shipbuilding Corporation. So. Um, that is, of course, a very promising, I think, uh, approach, I think, uh, Giuseppe, because that's the first time we, we witness in, in modern cruising or passenger shipping that three partners like this are teaming up together. Is that right? So Western expertise, U.S. expertise, uh, together with Chinese expertise. Yes, from Carnival. So yes. is that the only way to do it? Um, otherwise, they or yeah? No, <laughs> it's, it's not the only way of doing it. Um, it's... It's one way of doing it. <laughs> but they need a Western expertise. They China, China without the Western expertise. Yeah, they, they, they can't do it without the ex Western expertise. Um, we believe that within the next five years, China will be building cruise ships. We still believe that they will be designed in Europe uh, because that ability takes a lot longer to develop. Um, but it, it's not far away from China starting to build their own cruise ships. And Dominic, uh, this is a provocative question. If Carnival, one of your arch rivals, we can say it like this, if Carnival is going to build cruise ships uh, together with Fincantieri and the Chinese, are you going to see yourself in the position that you have to order ships from your arch rival? So, I mean, as I said, we've got, we've got a very strong pipeline of orders of ships already in place. I speak um, about the future, five years. Because, or otherwise said, sorry, interrupting you, otherwise said, do you have any plans to do the same thing, to do a kind of agreement with, with shipyards, uh, Royal Caribbean uh, also building up something? So what we do, I mean, we're a very large global company. We're always looking all around the world for where there are future opportunities. So if the right opportunity came along, of course, we'd look at it. 
Um, we haven't announced anything. We haven't said that we're building ships in China. What we've focused on is building our business in China in very close cooperation with the, with the, with the Chinese market. So we focused on putting the right ships in the market, investing in the brand, creating the right product. And that's our major focus at the moment, to build a very strong base of business in China. That's our, that's our major focus. How do you have to change, Dominic, the product? I mean, we have heard that um, Chinese, they love the Western lifestyle. Uh, as we also are very interested in the Asian lifestyle, um, do you have to adapt uh, your ships uh, to the Chinese market or can you use them more or less the way they are built uh, in, in, in Europe? So again, we've really learned over the last five years that some adaption of the product is necessary, but probably not as much as some people would expect. So what is really clear is that the Chinese guests who we're getting on board our ship, they're looking for an international premium product. They're not looking for a pure Chinese product, for example. They want a Western premium product, but they also want what I would call a taste of home on board. So we have many more Chinese food offerings on board, um, but real proper high quality Chinese food that our Chinese guests enjoy and look forward to, but we also have Western food. Um, the entertainment, we change some of the entertainment on board to, to offer entertainment that is more suitable, more suited to the, to the Chinese audience, but we also have Western type entertainment as well. Um, we, have, um, we have more retail offering on board the ships because it became very clear early on that our Chinese they are, they are big spenders, right? The Chinese are big spenders. They, for they enjoy, I mean, they, you only board. have to anyone who's been to China here or if you've been to Hong Kong, you can see that Chinese guests, they love shopping. Um, and a cruise ship, we, we, we've, we've changed the type of retail offering that we've got on board our ship. So we have some very high end, some even more high end brands, for example, on our, on our, Chinese, uh, on our Chinese sailings. Um, so we, we, we change the food, we offer more variety of food for the Chinese guests, we change the entertainment, we bring more Chinese crew on board, because of course they want to, to speak to people who speak their local language. But it's not all Chinese crew, it's a mix. Um, and then we, we put different retail on board. So we end up with a, with a beautiful product. It's very, um, it's a Western international product, but it has got tastes and nuances of China on board, and it works extremely well for us. I would like to add Giuseppe, uh, something yes, to this, because of course uh, we as designers or consultants as well, as a, you know, we, we, we get involved pretty early. So right now, the Chinese parties which have shown their interest in developing their own homemade products, so to say, or initially, you know, uh, European tonnage to be brought to their market specifically built on demand and subsequently uh, their own constructions for Chinese in China, they are actually looking at a, a customization of the product. So they ask us, you know, to concentrate a lot rather than on a specific aspect of the design, to concentrate a lot on the outfitting of the interior and the style. We notice, you know, for specific uh, reasons, they want to sort of have a, a different feeling. So I think right now they're happy with what we can provide on top end vessels, but as the market there will grow and their expertise will grow and their expectation will grow, I think they will tend towards products which are more suitable to their lifestyle or taste. This is an interesting point, Giuseppe, because um, uh, um, be before I will uh, ask the third question um, to the audience, uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, Dominic, uh, you also did um, or are in the process of, uh, of founding a new domestic cruise line, uh, Sky Sea Cruises. Uh, behind this is uh, I think one of the largest travel companies in China, Sea Trip, and that is a little bit, uh, could it be um, described as a double strategy. On one hand, you have your Western product with the Royal Caribbean brand. Maybe we'll see other brands of you um, uh, getting there. On the other hand, we see also your involvement in, in domestic uh, lines. Is that more than to cater for the people, as Giuseppe, you said, who want a Chinese product, even though it's a second-hand ship, it's just, uh, maybe to make it clear, it, it, they just bought it from Celebrity Cruises. Uh, it's, the, it's the old Mercury. Uh, which Century. 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 Mercury and Galaxy are TUI, TUI cruises, Mindshift 1 and Mindshift 2, just to come back to, to Germany. We hear also that this Chinese venture maybe are going to, are interested to buy Mindshift 2, Mindshift 3, but this is just another, uh, no, Mindshift 1 and Mindshift 2, yes, exactly. Um, well, just a, a, a short, short break. Um, 
Is there a double strategy uh, for you that on one hand domestic uh, shipping line, cruise line, and on, on the other hand the Royal Caribbean Western brand? Well, Sky Sea is positioning itself as a, as a premium upscale international Chinese product. So our feeling of the China market is it is going to grow significantly over the next five to ten years. And there will be a number of local cruise lines that will establish themselves and will be successful. And there will be a number of international cruise lines that will continue to grow and be what successful. What will be the difference between the two product-wise? I don't... I mean, if you look at a market like China, if it's going to get to two, three, four million guests, um, there's room for all kinds of differences in terms of the product. I mean, I can't sit here today and say this is what the difference will be. What, what, what entrepreneurs and, and, and will do is they will, they will come up with products that are suited to a segment of the market. And when you're talking about a market that has got the potential to grow by so much, there will be all types of different segments. So we think that there will be local cruise lines that will set up and be successful in the China market. And we think that Sea Trip is a successful, established company in China. Um, and they're a very good, natural partner for us to partner with. Um, there will be one of a number, of probably, of successful local cruise lines. I think there will be a number of successful international cruise lines. And you know, we're very committed to... Uh, to be one of the leading players in that market. But if you look five years out, how much the market is growing, there's going to be room for a number of different cruise lines in the, mar in the market. Domestic and international. Well, domestic means that behind, there's the expertise of, for yeah. example, Royal Caribbean. I mean, we're talking so about a country with population of uh, billions. I mean, it's, it's a... This is not like if we're, if we're looking at... Um, the UK cruise market, for example, which is a very strong, healthy cruise market, but there are only 55 million people or 60 million people in the UK. There are limits to how much it's going to grow. There, the limits are less in China, so their possibilities are significant, and which is why we think there will be a number of new cruise lines establishing themselves over the next few years. And, and more than anything else, because I always you have to go back to the customer piece, more than anything else because... Cruising works very well for Chinese consumers. They love it. They love the fact you can pack a lot into a short amount of time. They love the fact that you can see a number of different destinations in a short amount of time. They can have an incredible, wonderful experience in four or five days. They can, um, they can eat amazing food, great, great entertainment, have great service. Um, it's, a, it's a really well-suited product for the, China, for the China market. And because of that, I think we'll see it the industry continuing to grow. Um, one more question then to Raoul, but first I want to, to give the audience the opportunity to, to answer this question. Number three, please, which would it have in mind? I see where the number three... Yeah, that's a hard one. Eh? When will China be able to export? to export chips that they designed and built to the Western markets. Because building Chinese ships for the Chinese market is one thing, but um, exporting them to, to our traditional markets, if I may say so, it's another one. If you think in the near future that is going to happen, press one. If you think this will take a long time, press number two. And if you simply think this will never happen, number three. Let's see. Nice questions. <laughs> Long doesn't mean never. So you all think that China will export <coughs> cruise ships to our markets. And uh, Raul, does that mean that uh, Western or European shipyards will disappear? Um, disappear, no. Uh, have additional competition, most definitely. Um, in my former life, I worked at Carnival Shipbuilding. Um, within our consultancy, we've been involved with 78 new cruise vessels. Considering there's about 290 on the market, we've had one or two that we, we know. Um, We've had good ships in Europe, we've had bad ships in Europe, we've had bad ships in Asia, we've good ships in Asia. Um, 
Europe certainly has the design capability. It has the supply chain network. It has the contractors that they're well used to working with. Uh, over a period of 10 years, there's been a consolidation of subcontractors. A lot of shipyards moved from bringing in, sub bringing in subcontractors to manufacture cabins to actually setting up their own cabin manufacturing facilities. Um, so that's something that is not out in Asia at the moment. Um, they but it will. It will it, come. It, it, so, so it, most are, it most definitely will. You are all three. You are absolutely 100% uh, convinced. There's, there's, that it will there's happen, no argument about that. I, guess. I mean, anybody who disagrees with that is fooling themselves. Um, I mean, we had the the first cruise ship being not just refit, but a, a proper refurbishment recently, which was Cost Atlantica in HRDD shipyard in Shanghai. It wasn't a major, it wasn't a full revitalization project, but it, it was significant. Those sort of projects are starting in, in China, which will build the supply chain network. The biggest thing is the design of a cruise ship and the build of a cruise ship. 20% of a cruise ship is done by the shipyard, 80% is done by subcontractors. But it all has to be designed and coordinated by the shipyard. Um, the way we see it happening over between the next five to 10 years is you know, prototypes may be built in Europe and then second, third and fourth in class could potentially be built in Asia on the license uh, with some European supervision. European shipyards are not naive. They know that Asia wants to get into this game. Um, so it's also a competition of who's going to be first to help the Asians, because if you're not the first to help them, your competition will help them, and that leaves you in a, an awkward position. So it, it's, it's not a question of when or how China is going to build cruise ships. It's, it's more of a question of which is going to be the first European company to help them do it. And that's, that's what the critical part okay. is. I have the last question, um, uh, which might be of interest also for Dominic, but um, let's from Royal Caribbean and Celebrity and Azamara Club Cruises, but actually your Quantum of this is the Royal Caribbean brand. That's why I'm calling only Royal Caribbean. Uh, the fourth question, last question. When will China manage to conquer the Western markets with their own cruise products. You know, we, we, we have, we've been talking about cruise ship building, but uh, on the other hand, we have also cruise products. So far, cruise products are being developed with Western, let's say, Western help, European US help. But are Chinese uh, companies uh, going to be able uh, to understand our market so well that they will swap into our markets? If you think this will be happening in the near future, please press number one. If you think this will be a long time, number two. And if you think this will never happen, number three, please. <coughs> That's a very interesting another, it, it gives us another picture, right? Uh, so cruise ship building, you, uh, you guys think that yes, this will happen. Cruise ship exporting from China, yes, this will happen. But uh, product-wise, uh, you still believe a lot in the expertise of Mr. Paul. This is going to be to, to be to stay a long time like this. Dominic, what is your view for the last? We have two, three minutes uh, till this will be an interesting question for me too. Conquer is quite a powerful word. <laughs> kind of, wow. Um, we, knew, we knew why we, had, we, we, we chose this word. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that's interesting is I think we're going to see increasing inbound tourism into China. So I think there are more and more people who are fascinated and interested to travel around China. And I think cruise is actually a, a good way of exploring the country, particularly if it's combined with a land-based vacation. So I think we're going to see, we're already seeing quite a lot of growth in that area. We're going to see more people coming from all kinds of Western markets into China 
to travel um, on ships, I think, both land-based vacations but also on cruise lines. And there's no reason to think over the next few years why some of those people won't choose some of the new local type lines that are starting up, as long as they've got sales and distribution in place. Why not? Um, I think for, their, for the Chinese cruise lines to then conquer other markets, um, I think that at some point, you, know, you can never say never, at some point there is w what, there's every reason to think they might come into other international markets to expand. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of growth to go after within China. So the China and Asia region will have a lot of cruise growth over the next five years. They are to still kept busy with their own domestic... Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a bit like, yes, uh, yeah, maybe there are other opportunities elsewhere in the world, but actually the real exciting opportunity for the, for the Chinese cruise lines will be there in China. So they're probably not going to spend too much time thinking about expanding to other parts of the world at this stage. I think they want to make China work for them, for them first. Um, Great. Gentlemen, so far, thanks very much. I just one comment to make, uh, because when we, if we talk about the Chinese, if we talk about probably uh, the danger of Chinese, uh, I just want to maybe put it in the other way, that um, competition, I think, is very welcome, and that it was always very welcome in our industry. And I think uh, um, it's my personal view. I don't want so much China... Um, being regarded as a danger. I think we should, it, it's an opportunity. And I think Chinese uh, expertise, uh, once it's going to be established, is from my point of view, if I may, so very, very welcome. It will be good for the industry. Uh, we will maybe uh, see innovation in an industry which we today we, we don't even think about. I hope you agree uh, with Absolutely. just saying that uh, we, we should not call China regularly as a danger, but also as an opportunity. Yeah, for, for us as cruise lines, China is a significant opportunity, but there are also probably many of you here who run travel companies, who work in travel companies, and you are probably already, but if not, should be very aware of the opportunities that exist for your business in China. And the other thing I'd say, it's a remarkable country. They're remarkable people, um, and it's a remarkable country. It's a very beautiful country, and I think it's got enormous potential longer term for China, not just as a cruise market, but as a whole travel market, both inbound and outbound. It's a fascinating region. Well, just, just a short just comment, to, please. Just, just to finish up on that point, will China conquer Europe or the Western market? Um, Dominic is right. They've got a lot to concentrate on in Asia. Uh, but there is also a lot of Asian cruise passengers are, that are starting to look to Europe because they don't want to just cruise around the South China Sea. They want to come see Europe. It's a fantastic way of getting around Europe is going on a cruise. So that's one option. So they have to start looking at domestic style cruises for European market or a Chinese element as Royal Caribbean has managed to get successfully in China, but deploying it in Europe for the Chinese guests as well. The other thing is you look at the global brands, especially Carnival Corporation. What have they done? They've bought an Italian cruise line. They've bought a German cruise line. Costa, they've, bought a, they've bought an English cruise line. They've bought another English cruise line. So they've got that. Are the Chinese capable of doing that? I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. I think uh, we are just closing this panel um, time-wise. Uh, maybe, well, no, not yet. Giuseppe, I, I didn't ask you whether you have something to add. Well, I, I agree 100 percent that we are talking about opportunity. You know, it's, uh, it, it is incredible to see the change in speed and the change in knowledge. And also, personally, I talk as, you know, working very closely with the shipyards down there is to understand that there is a new wave of managers and uh, decision makers there. They think in a way which is much closer to us now than it was five years ago. And the change is by the year. So I think it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity on either, either side. <coughs> thank you very much, and um, thank you for your interest. And I think uh, we are going to be kept busy with this subject for, for a long time. Looking forward to it. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you.